The local college football season kicks off next week. In preparations for that, the UWS Yellow Jackets held picture and media day today. The Jackets mustered two wins and a tie last year under first-year head coach Dan Lounsbury. Running the offense this year will be Jason Woods, number nine, a transfer from the University of Utah. Falling out with a coach there led him to secure the open against Concordia of St. Paul a week from Saturday. Now, rumor has it the Yellow Jackets might be getting a uh, Division I transfer from an actually ranked school next week. A hint? The running back is from down south, and we'll see. Big happenings at UWS. Butch Habnot, the leading rusher at the University of Texas the past two years, is seeking a transfer due to alleged scholastic violations. His first choice for a new school, UWS. We're not saying that he's genuinely here yet. What we're saying is there's, there's some things that have to take place, and he's definitely called us, and he's told us some things, and so now we're in the progress of getting the paperwork done, and... You know, it may or may not uh, come out uh, the way we'd like it to come out. Definitely, we'd love Late to have This them. afternoon, University of Texas running back Butch Hadnot had not arrived in town. But it looks good. It looks like he's going to come here instead of UW-Superior. Regardless of Hadnot, the Jackets will be pretty potent at running back with the likes of newcomer Damon Hamilton and the return for his junior year of hard-working Tom Bellinger, the leading rusher and kickoff return man of a year ago. Yeah, well, I feel greater than ever. Um, a lot of talent in this camp. Not a lot of guys, but it's like a program. Not a lot of guys, but it's all quality players. And I'm really excited. I want to get this get going and see what's going to happen here. There seems to be a little new attitude here this year, don't you think? Oh, it's all intensity. It's big, t big team, little me, yes, they're saying. And so, all intense. Everyone's totally intense. Uh, a lot of new guys come in here just starting a new fire that hasn't been here for a while, and it's making everyone else work harder. Bellinger rushed for 484 yards in 91, and his offensive mates will have more beef this fall. Well, it's going to be a big team here, and I think uh, hope a lot of people are watching because it's going to be a whole big turnaround. Hey, you got some big people to block for you, too, this year. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of big guys. Uh, they're like last year, I had about 230 across the year. I got about 300 across the front line, and, and that'll be a, that'll be a lot, lot, lot different story when I'm out there running. And UWS and UMD both open with home games Saturday Well, afternoon. you could say that UWS football coach dropped a bomb on his players tonight. Uh, and it uh, wasn't entirely his decision. He made it along with the administration. With all of the mounting problems over there, we should have seen this coming. Tough news. Oh, no doubt about it, Stacy. The UWS football team has suffered many losses in recent years, but you could put all of them together and they still wouldn't hurt as much as the loss the Yellow Jackets players suffered today. It was the loss of their football program, at least for this season, and possibly forever. Today, the university announced its decision to suspend football operations for the remainder of the 92 season due to a dwindling roster. Injury and, ineligi and ineligibility had reduced it to 28 players, with six of those questionable for this weekend's home game with UW Stout. UWS Athletic Director Pat Dolan called it an unsafe situation. First and foremost is the safety and concern of the student-athletes, and for someone to lose contact sport eligibility for the rest of his life because he's injured or maimed or we've discussed this and I decide that we're going to play or Coach Lounsbury says we're going to play and somebody does get hurt that's a much worse decision. It kind of leaves a knot in your stomach and you don't feel very good about it and uh, you know when your kids are crying and uh, they're highly emotionalized and you don't have any good answers for them you know other than you know they don't see that it's for their benefit they see we'll go to the last man. If we've only got one guy, we'll play. For their part, the Yellow Jackets players decided to hold practice anyway today. They had been informed that their season was over only an hour before the official announcement was made, and they were in a state of shock. We have enough numbers, and the numbers that we do have do not match up size-wise with other teams in the conference. And that's what we were told. And I, I know I was taught and I was brought up at East and here that you only need 11 people to play football. I don't feel, I feel cheated. I feel like the rug's been pulled off underneath me and my, my team. And <laughs> I feel, I feel like somebody just killed me. I don't think that the institution re realized when they made this decision when, when, when you burn somebody like they burn this team, you know, it's going to be real difficult for players to turn around and come back and want to represent you in your, in your institution. And the future of UWS football remains very much in doubt tonight. And for a program that's produced the likes of Doug Sutherland, Dom Mazzelli, and Mertz Mortarelli, it's a very dark day indeed.